that this, I'm excited. This is the first week of a, of a four-week series I'm, I'm planning to do as we look at the book of Proverbs. And I call it learning wisdom from the, the book of Proverbs. And I want to do that because I think our world, like often it is, but especially today, to me, in my opinion, is something that's missing uh, in our world. I think people today are just living day by day, and they're making decisions without really thinking about them, giving them much thought. And it's not that people in our world aren't intelligent. I think they're probably more intelligent than at any point in world history. It's quite the opposite. People are educated. They have access through the internet to information and be able to learn. But these aren't the kinds of smarts that I'm talking about. I'm talking about common sense wisdom that we get from God. I'm not talking about book smarts. Maybe we are talking about the book of the Bible and God's wisdom for the world. And the reason God wants us to know his wisdom and experience his wisdom is so that we can live our lives into his plan and purpose for them. He wants us to live a full and a blessed life. But those intentions that God has for us, are they don't happen when we live carelessly, when we make decisions without thinking. I wish Daphne was here. She did a Kingdom's Word, and her message was about our words that we, we speak. And she used the example, she had a small uh, tube of toothpaste. She squeezed all the, t- the toothpaste out, and then she asked us to put the toothpaste back in the tube. And she said, just like that toothpaste going in the tube, once we say something We can't take it back. It's out in the world. I was reflecting that growing up, I was blessed, especially when it got warm yesterday. I was thinking back to my my younger days. We were blessed as a family. Uh, My mom and the four children, our grandparents would take us to the beach on vacation every summer. It was something we looked forward to. It was usually Wildwood or Ocean City, Maryland, and they have the boardwalk, of course, and even state fairs. They have those games of chance. Oh, you just take this ball and throw it in the basket and you win a big prize. And we learned, I learned very quickly, most people learn that the really the only chance you really have is of losing your money. There's no chance, little to no chance, that you're going to win that big prize, but you're going to lose money. I So I stayed away from those games of chance. I liked arcades growing up. I go in and play pinball, you put a quarter in and maybe Pac-Man or asteroid, whatever it was, I could, if you were good and had skill, you could actually enjoy yourself for a few minutes. And one time I stumbled upon this, the, the quarter slide, where you have this pile of change, quarters, in this machine and these bars pushing it, and it's just on the ledge. And you add your quarters and it push, and I looked, and there's this huge pile of quarters just waiting to fall off. So, of course, I dropped the quarter in, I dropped the quarter in, before long, 75 cents turned into $4. I was like, hey, this is all right. I think I'm going to like this. Before long, I had $18 in quarters. And that little voice, you should quit while you're ahead. That's, you know, when you're a youngster back in the 70s, $18, I was rich. You know, I could have spent a lot on Pac-Man and sodas and pizza. And, but, you know, there's that other pile that's right there. It's, It looks like it's going to fall. I'll just keep trying. So you know, when I left, I didn't have any of my quarters left. I'm afraid that decision, the way I handled that, is the way a lot of people live their lives. They don't think about what they're doing. And they might have that little voice say, don't do that because, or maybe you should think twice, but it always works out in the end. We make decisions without much thought. We're so concerned with the immediate, we forget about the future. And we often surround ourselves with people or listen to people who convince us what is wrong is right and what is right is wrong. And sometimes I know, I often overestimate my own ability to say no when I need to say no. That's why I believe if we're going to live into the life and the will and the plan and the purpose that God has for us, 
we're going to have to use wisdom and God's wisdom. The book of Proverbs is part of our Bibles, and it, they call it wisdom literature. It's in the Old Testament, and there's other, other books that they, they, they attribute this wisdom literature. And those people who wrote that and put it together, they believe that these ideas would help people live and make good decisions so their lives would go more smoothly. Ways of behavior that help strengthen and facilitate our relationships with one another, and even, even gives us principles on how to handle our finances. They were convinced that if people would just learn from the wisdom of God that they wrote down and use our common sense thinking that God has given us. We have common sense to make rational decisions. That's what differentiates us from the animal kingdom. God has given us the ability to choose. I think many in our world today can use these ideas to live and make better choices. And I hope as we journey through Proverbs over the next few weeks, we're all going to be able to learn something that we can apply in our lives that helps us live better in this world today. Because God's created us to experience and live a life full of his blessings. He wants us to to live lives that make a difference in our communities, in our family, our friends, our co-workers. And if we're honest, most of us want to live like that too. That would be great, we think, if that's how my life is. But there's also a, a truth, a fundamental truth that we have to understand. We have God's will, and we have our will. And oftentimes, that becomes a place of friction when you try and align our will with God's will. And that's why God's given us His Word, our Bibles, to help us. Help us understand and learn more about God, and learn more about Jesus, and the plan He has for us to live our lives. And here in Proverbs, those writers, they insisted that God, God is the source of wisdom. Aside from God, the world is utterly lost. That's what they're, the point they make. Proverbs 1 7, it says this The fear of the Lord is the beginning and preeminent part of knowledge. But arrogant fools despise wisdom and instruction and self discipline. Right at the beginning, we're saying, they're saying, wisdom, God's wisdom starts with having a, a fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord? But God is loving. God is merciful. So we have this quandary of, they're saying, I have to have fear of the Lord? But that idea that we have of God being loving, God is kind, we're told. And he's certainly all those things. But he's also all-powerful. And he demands justice. And this verse, what this says to me is, we have to start with having the right fear of the Lord. And I can relate to a, a small group I was in and we we're having a discussion about fear of the Lord and I say what I feel and I said, I really don't have a fear of the Lord because my experience is God and his mercy and his forgiveness and his love and I'm not sure I have a fear of the Lord. But as my faith has grown over the years, I've learned I do live in with a fear and in a fear of the Lord. It's a fear that I understand. I have a right understanding that God is way above this all-powerful, omnipresent God. And I'm down here. I'm one of seven billion people on the planet. God is immortal and all-knowing. We're all mortal. We have limited knowledge. He's all-powerful and we have restrictions, whether it's bodily or physically or mentally even. He's all going, and we can only know so much. For me, to fear God is to properly understand our position before Him and God's position above all. And if we live our lives without an awe and a wonder of the amazing, powerful God, then we run the risk of making Everything harder than it's meant to be.
But if we begin with a deep honor, a deep reverence for God, we might begin to make different decisions in our daily lives. If we know God is in charge, maybe we're going to be more mindful of what we say and what we do. If we know God is in control, maybe we'll be more eager to obey his word for us. When we fear God, we also live in awe and wonder of all that God is. And we can't even begin to understand fully what that is. But we begin to live more in line with God's will, God's plan, and God's purpose for the world. When we recognize how beautiful God's plan and purpose is. Wisdom can lead us in generous living because that's how God's design works. Wisdom can lead us to faithfully living our lives because it's part of God's intention for his people, his children. And wisdom can lead us to honest living because it's part of God's plan and God's purpose for our lives. It certainly doesn't mean that we're going to have flawless lives that are going to be perfect without problems. That's not what it's saying. What I'm saying when we understand the fear of God and the wisdom, knowing that God is in control. But it increases our potential for experiencing the life that God wants us to live. The people who wrote the book of Proverbs, Benny attributed to King Solomon. But whoever it was, they make this valuable point of how important and how precious wisdom is. It's the main text of our uh, uh, scripture today comes from the third chapter of Proverbs, beginning at the 14th verse. And they say, For wisdom's profit is better than the profit of silver, and her gain is better than fine gold. She's more precious than rubies, and nothing you can wish for compares with her in value. Long life is in her right hand, in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are highways of ple- pleasantness and favor, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy is everyone who holds her tightly. The Lord by his wisdom founded the earth. By his understanding he has established the heavens. By his knowledge, the deeps were broken up, and the clouds drip with dew. My son, let them not escape your sight, but keep sound wisdom and discretion, and they will be life to your soul, and a gracious adornment to your neck. And in the Amplified Bible, they they explain it like this, life to your soul, your inner self, and a gracious adornment to your neck, your outer self. Then you will walk on your way securely and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. This is the word of God still speaking today. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. God's wisdom. Wisdom is being compared to the most valuable metals and and jewelry the most precious things in the world. Many people would do anything to line their pockets with wealth and precious items. But how many won't even lift a finger to be filled with godly wisdom and godly knowledge? What if we have exerted so much time and energy for things that in the end don't really matter? What if all along we should have been striving to live in awe and wonder of God? We start with that. What if we allow the wisdom that comes from viewing God in this way to lead us in our day-to-day living and the decisions we make? There, it's saying it's like gold. It's like silver. It's like rubies. It's that valuable. And the work that goes into searching for such a valuable thing as God's wisdom, it begins with developing a humble spirit. Humility is an important teaching that goes throughout God's Word. 
Jesus, Jesus lived humbly and taught the importance of humility. In Luke 14, 11, Jesus said this, For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who habitually humbles himself will be exalted. And an important part of being humble and having humility is admitting when we've made a mistake, when we've been, okay, I screwed up again, I made a mistake, I'm wrong. Being able to say, I'm wrong. An old Spanish proverb says, a wise man changes his mind, a fool never will. That's a telltale sign of a humble person, just the willingness to admit, oh, I'm wrong, I'm sorry, I messed up again. In biblical terms, we call this repentance. And again, it's a theme that runs throughout our Bibles. There's something powerful that happens when we hear God speak to us. And we say, oh, I know God didn't want me to do that. I, I repent. I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm sorry, God. I did it again. Forgive me. I'm going to try and do better. That kind of aligns us back on the path that God wants us to live. Once we repent and we ask for forgiveness, we're forgiveness. The forgiveness is given to us immediately through Jesus Christ. We become new people when we start living like that. When we realize the mistakes we make and we ask God to help us. We begin to look and think more like Jesus Christ. In the book of Proverbs, again, that we're drawing this from, says this in chapter 28, verse 13. Verse 13. He who conceals his transgressions will not prosper. But whoever confesses and turns away from his sins will find compassion and mercy. In this verse, we're given this concept, this key concept, to help us find wisdom for our lives in order us to fully experience the wisdom that God wants to give us. We need to repent when we know we're wrong. We have to confess the ways that we've gotten it wrong and renounce this wrongdoing. That's the way God wants us to live. So we can live fully into the, the pathway or the roadmap that God has for our lives. It's kind of like a GPS. I use a GPS even if I know where I'm going. It helps me realize how far away I am. It also has a video camera on it. I've been known to argue with the GPS. I'm glad that she's not here to confirm that, but she can tell you some stories. It says, go straight, and I get off. Or maybe there's a detour. Even though we're trying to follow it, we make a mistake. It corrects you. In 500 feet, make a left. It wants to get us back on the right road to wherever we're going. That's what God wants for us. That's how repentance works. When we get off the pathway that God has laid before us, His will, His purpose. And we realize that we just, I'm sorry, Lord. Sorry, forgive me. And God's going to work to get us back on the right path, the right roadway. How many of us want to follow God's roadmap for our lives, the path He has laid out already for us? If so, we, just, we start with that first verse. We have the right fear of the Lord. We, we understand our position down here and God's position up there. But that should help us if we know God is in control and we understand that no matter what happens, awful things happen. But we take the burden off ourselves. That might help us to live more fully into God's purpose and plan. And if we know God's up there in control, maybe we'll be more mindful of our actions that aren't in alignment. Those simple things we do, oftentimes without thinking. I know I want to stay on the path that God has for my life. And if I do that, I need His wisdom. I can't do it on my own, I know that. That makes wisdom, as those verses said, one of the most valuable things we can have. God's wisdom in our lives is so valuable. What are we doing to gain more of God's wisdom? Do we seek after God's wisdom like gold and silver? In order for us to fully experience the way of wisdom, we have to have this humble spirit, being willing to admit when we're wrong, ask for forgiveness, if we're wise. When we find out we've gone astray, we've gotten off the, the roadway, 
in light and in awe of all that God is, we, we ask for forgiveness. So that God can give us the instructions to put us back on the right path. We're forgiven and accepted and redeemed every time. So today I want to invite all of us to practice wisdom. Begin there. God's created us to experience the fullness of life. He wants us to live a life that makes a difference not only to us, but to our friends, our family, our co-workers, the communities we live in. So we have this sense of deep purpose that God has placed before us. We stand before God in humility, with awe and wonder. Confess those sinful and selfish ways when they happen. May we all be in a spirit of repentance and, and choose to allow God in his wisdom to lead us all of our days. Amen.